Julian Rademeyer, head of our observe of Observatory for Eastern and Southern Africa Global Initiative Against Transnational Crime. Thank you, Julian, for availing yourself um, this evening. When we take a look at the supply chain, hi, uh, do we put as much focus on the, you know, the guys at the top as we do the guys on the ground? Well, I think, I think the focus this past week has been largely on the Zamazamas, the many of whom are um, illegal uh, minors or many of them are undocumented migrants from neighboring countries. And there's been very much a focus fueled to some degree by um, this, this uh, level of xenophobic hatred that, that tends to rise to the surface in all in these cases, particularly driven here as well by, you know, these horrific um, rapes that were documented. Um, so I think that the, you know, the focus has been on trying to eradicate uh, the illegal miners, the Zamazanas, weed them out in communities. We've seen cases of vigilantism, uh, communities where, you know, effectively the poor are hunting the poor, uh, pounding people out of communities, setting shacks alight. In some cases, uh, murders have happened. In other cases, people have been stripped naked, handed over to police. But I think this ignores a much bigger problem. And that's a problem that's been festering for a very long time. You know, this is not something that's occurred recently. Uh, illegal mining dates back more than 20 years in South Africa. You know, the first cases of documented Zama Zama activity were in Belkum in 1999. Um, and it's grown steadily aided and abetted by networks within South Africa. You know, the people who are profiting from this, the people who are profiting from uh, the, the ore that is extracted from those mines are in many cases South Africans. Um, it's South African companies. It's the, the jewelers and the gold dealers and the refineries, there are more than 100 refineries in Gauteng province alone that process this gold and help to launder that gold to markets in, for instance, the, the UAE and Dubai. Hmm. So you've got the miner, you've got the buyer, you've got the dealer, and then you have these international um, role players. In my very simple thinking, how, where do you even begin to stamp that out, right? Because also, how do you trace it? Mm. Well, that, I mean, that is a significant problem. And I think there are a number of issues at play here. Um, one is that, you know, we've seen what we've seen this week have been, uh, has been a, a, a short-term response in many ways. You know, flood an area with police, carry out hundreds of arrests, hope that you get enough evidence to convict at least some of those who've been arrested. That's not the way to deal with something like this, which is, you know, organized crime. You need targeted investigations. You need intelligence to build cases. You need to look at the networks as a whole. Um, you know, it's, it's pointless arresting hundreds of low-level people. Um, you know, you need to be able to, to infiltrate those networks, build the case, find the people who are uh, involved at all levels, and particularly the managerial structures of these, of these syndicates. Um, I think there are real challenges in also in going after some of those activities because they're linked to countries, you know, outside of South Africa. For instance, the UAE, there's also some gold which is laundered through, through Mozambique and places like that. But there are a lot of starting points. You know, the South African Revenue Service has done investigations on this, um, particularly looking into, into VAT scams, uh, which exist around the illegal gold trade. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the scale of, of fraud that has been involved there is staggering. Um, you know, they uncovered a multi-billion rand tax fraud scheme. Um, you know, this shadowy world of Kruger's, uh, Kruger rand, scrap dealers and illegal mining. Um, and the scheme was so immense that, that two South African companies claimed around 24.4 billion in fraudulent VAT returns on gold uh, between 2012 and 2020. Um, and VAT scams are, are a big part of this. Um, you know, the, the trade in secondhand gold and gold jewelry in South Africa, much of it through, uh, through secondhand gold dealers is tax exempt. Um, and we see that the, what, what happens with a lot of that gold and a lot of the, the illegal gold is that it's laundered, um, it is refined into a way that, that gives it the, the uh, or it's melted down uh, into ore that gives it the consistency of uh, the purity of jewelry. And then it's laundered into the legal trade in gold, the legal international trade in gold, and, and in recycled gold. And effectively, it disappears. Um, so this is big money. Hmm. Uh, this is big money around the ranges of what, really? 
Um, well, you know, as I said, this particular one, one scheme that we talk about is, you know, ranging in the billions. We talk about billions of rands worth mm. of, of, of gold that are involved here. Um, mm. And, you know, the, um, there seems to be an inability on the side of police. And, you know, I think that what we're also seeing in communities, um, particularly where there have been high levels of vigilantism this week, are, are people rising up because there's been a void that's been left by a largely absent police force. A police force that has not demonstrated an ability to investigate uh, complex organized crime like this and to ensure the safety of communities, um, particularly where you have the violence that goes along with this illicit industry. Um, and, you know, the levels of corruption that are involved. You know, you, you also hear stories of entire police stations near gold mines that are on the take. Um, police that are facilitating and using police vehicles to move gold ore for, for some of these groups. So it's, it's something that has been building and building for, for nearly two decades. Um, and, you know, the tentacles spread deep into our society. Um, and it's going to be quite a task to, to, uh, to unravel it. You know, the, the police minister has talked about rolling actions in all four provinces, these kinds of takedown operations that we've seen this week. But that in itself is not going to change us. What you have to have is a change in approach, a change in strategy, targeted investigations, long-term investigations, and we need to see, as we so rarely do in this country, prosecutions and convictions. Hmm. Thank you very much, Julian, uh, for availing yourself this afternoon. Julian Rademeyer of the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime.